What are you drinking there, doctor? Uh, it looks like uh, bourbon or something. I almost, I almost, I almost <laughs> snapple when um, Mrs. Barr said that. Right, looks like we're about to go live. Whoops, go it's live. IEP season, right, so? <laughs> Right. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It's always. <laughs> All right, we should be live any second. Hey, dude. Uh, Dennis, call when you're on. Yeah, Please, like uh, as much as possible, do have your microphone off as much as you possibly can. Susan, I'm going to call you at 1045 okay. tomorrow before our 11 o'clock hearing. Okay. Mr. Padavani, I'm going to send you a text message. Okay. You heard me, though, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay, we are live. It has, it has started on YouTube. Okay. Let's call the meeting to order. The New Jersey, New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the East Camden County Regional School District has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the three municipal buildings of the constituent districts in the board secretary's office notification forwarded to the courier post and the Philadelphia inquiry please rise for flag salute I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. America. Okay. and to the republic, the republic of America. which it stands, one nation, one nation, under, God, under, God, under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty, and, liberty and justice for all. Just, just for all. And we have for all conflicts. Mr. Brown? Present. Mr. Campbell? Mr. Campbell? Here. Mrs. Chow? Here. Mrs. David? Here. Mr. Dykert? Mr. Dykert? Mrs. Gar? Present. Mrs. Parker? Here. Mrs. Mr. Paul? Um, yes. Mr. DiCicco. Yes. Is Mr. Dykert with us? Mr. Yeah, Clitier? I'm going to try giving him a call. See if he uh, dropped off. Hello. All right, there is. Oh. Did sound like him. Robert, you must have yes. called me. Yes, you're, right. you are here, Mr. Dykert. You are live. Okay. I'm here. Roll, roll call, Mr. Dykert. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. I have a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, May 6th regular so and executive session meetings. Second. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Chow? Yes. Mrs. David? Yes. Mr. Diker? Yes. Mrs. Gar? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. DiCicco? Yes. Uh, communications? Diana? Um, there's no communications, Mr. DiCicco. Okay. Superintendent's report, please. Yes, at this time, there are no HIB cases to report uh, for the month of April until now. Uh, in terms of the schedule for the, um, for the month, it was um, um, many activities 
from um, finalizing the hiring of our new BA to start in, in August and uh, negotiations, which will be talked about. And also, which will be presented tonight, we are required to submit an updated remote plan to the county office, New Jersey Department of Education. We, um, we were required to make any updates that we had made during the plan, but we had to put initial plans for what we are doing in the summer. So the updated plan, which I will present very shortly, um, includes uh, a framework of, of how we will move in this summer. And then the remainder of the time was uh, working on the closure of the year and finalizing all of our graduation plans as we, uh, we attended uh, meetings, uh, received feedback from uh, parents, and um, you know, really saw what the governor would allow us to do at this time. And as I had said at the meeting back in April with parents during district advisory, we would do everything we could to consider every possibility. And, um, and at this point, um, the plan has multiple multiple events, um, many of which we learned from other districts and we tried to make work for Eastern. Uh, back at the district advisory meeting, we the, uh, the graduation at the Air Force had just occurred, so we talked about that. And uh, there was a request that the governor denied uh, that was made concerning a graduation that would have been of that style with just the students on the field and no parents participating. So at this time, um, the plan was released publicly yesterday and uh, very pleased with the amount of uh, response in terms of volunteers. Uh, the number of staff members and I've heard from community members who wish to be part of the, uh, especially the diploma delivery that we'll be doing on June 17th. Um, so we did include a student survey portion to the, portion to the plan, so on Friday, We'll review the results and make the final announcements. And there are tremendous amounts of uh, details to work out, lots of coordination. Uh, very happy to say that Mr. Pico uh, just yesterday was able to secure additional time with the photographer on our field. So we will be able to offer weekend hours as well for the photographer. So any student and family that would not be able to make it during the week, we will be able to offer some weekend hours uh, for the uh, for the photo opportunities that we're gonna be offering on the field. So uh, that's where we are and it's gonna be update after update as we, we, we bring together every part of the plan uh, to execution. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Diana, uh, School Business Administrator. Yeah, um, just one item that I wanted to comment on that we have received uh, information from the state of New Jersey regarding the Federal CARES Act and the amount of funds that will be made available to our district. Um, that, that is federal funding uh, in for the, our response to the pandemic. Um, New Jersey was given about $310 million um, from the CARES Act, and our district's allocation is $110,246. So we have a grant application that we need to um, uh, go through and submit by the end of June, uh, which myself and Dr. Borda will be taking care of. And that's all I have to report. Okay, thank you. Okay, we now have several presentations. Uh, first will be the Scholar of the Month, Mr. Tall. Tall. Yes, so I am going to switch over to a pre-recorded uh, video compiled by our tech team that Dr. Toll had uh, met with the students, both the Scholar of the Month as well as our board student board representative. So we're gonna play that video right now.
All right. I'm going to need the assistance of Mr. Smart. The video is not coming up as an option for me. Mr. Smart, do you have the, the backup of the video? Yes, let me get that for you. Is that now presenting or no? Not. Mm. What am I doing? Sure. There we go. Yep, it's up now. Okay. Good evening. I have the distinct pleasure of presenting our scholars of the for the month of May of 2020 with Julianne Chu. She is viewing tonight virtually with her parents, Poppy and Sean Chu, and they reside in Voorhees, New Jersey. We tell you a little bit about this young lady's a list of current courses. Currently, she is I think we lost audio. Yes, I yeah. It's it says something about Phil Smart being mute uh, muted. So are you able to turn back your Audio. One jump, the honors, you know, it's just a little bit, Mr. Smart. Spanish four honors, you were such a one honors. Miss Julianne, two. You hear you tonight virtually. Let me tell you a little bit about this young lady's a list of current courses. Currently, she is taking AP Biology, AP Literature and Composition, AP Calculus AB, Lifestyle Fitness, Orchestra, Anatomy Honors, and AP Research. Some of her prior courses include Finance, Personal Financial Literacy, Biology 1, Geometry Honors, Chemistry Honors, English 2 Advanced Honors, AP Physics 1, Spanish 4 Honors, U.S. Century 1 Honors, Biology Honors, English 1 of the English 3 Honors, AP World History, AP U.S. History 2, um, AP Seminar, Pre-Calculus Honors, and AP English Language Composition. This young lady boasts a grade point average of 101.628, and she has an AC, ACT score of 33. A verbal score on the SAT of 670 and a math score of 730. Now, let me tell you about some of her involvement because she's just not about the books. This young lady is, a, is an accomplished uh, judo um, artist. And, you know, when I first had an opportunity to get to meet Julie, I saw her while she was training with our wrestling team. And believe me, she was tenacious when she was in there with those guys and other young ladies that are part of the team training. Um, other extracurricular involvement includes culture, being a part of the Cultural Diversity Club, the Interact Club, the Student Alliance, as well as the orchestra. And then honors and recognition she's received includes being a member of the National Honor Society, Spanish National Honor Society, being on the Principal's Honor Roll. She participated in the Rowan um, School of Medicine Medical Science Academy, and she also took part in the AP Capstone Program and was a Quest Bridge finalist. Some of her community activities include being a virtual physical therapy volunteer, as well as an academic health volunteer. Her work experience includes uh, being a children's judo coach at Judo Movement, 
Now, I've said enough about her. Now I'll let her talk to you about her career, career aspiration, where she's going to take her talents, and how her experience at Eastern helped shape her into the student that she is today. Julianne, Chu. Hi, um, my name is Julianne, and I would first like to thank the Board of Education and all of the teachers for making this meeting tonight possible. I know we are living in unprecedented times, and it's been very hard on all of us. But your dedication to the students, parents, and families has made the transition to online schooling so much easier. It is with great honor that I have the privilege tonight to receive the May Scholar of the Month Award. It is humbling to know that all of my work throughout these four years has paid off. If it wasn't for Eastern's support of teachers and involved faculty members, I would not be the student I am today. I would not be able to attend my dream school of the University of Pennsylvania in the upcoming fall. Throughout these years, sitting in numerous classrooms with numerous teachers, the most important lesson I've learned is to take pride in everything I do. No matter how big or small, I've been taught to view all the work I've done during my years at Eastern as an accomplishment. I want to thank all of the members of Eastern for showing me that high school does not have to have a divide between students and faculty. I would especially like to thank Dr. Toll for taking the time to stop me in the hallway to spend a few minutes asking about my college students, how my ACL was feeling, or how I was doing in judo. Being able to open teachers and faculty is here for me as a student to speak up for myself and make my opinions heard. Even though I would have liked to say to have said all of this in person, I'm still so grateful to have the opportunity to be a positive representation of Eastern now and in the future. Even though I will not be in the school next year, I take comfort in knowing that Eastern pride will always be carried within me wherever I go. And with this, I will be pursuing a uh, bachelor's degree in either biology or the biological basis of behavior and at the University of Pennsylvania in hopes that I can become a physical therapist in the future. Um, thank you for inviting me to share a few thoughts about my time at Eastern. Um, I'm here with my mom and dad, and my name is Cole Boyan. I'm a senior in the class of 2020 and a member of the baseball team. Over the course of the past four years, I've made many friendships that will be my or that will last my lifetime, and I've learned lessons about teamwork, resilience, and persistence that will serve you well as a student athlete at Penn State Harris State and beyond. In addition to the friends with I've made, the deepest connections, the strongest memories occurred on the baseball diamond. Athletics has allowed me to play alongside some of the school's most talented athletes who push me to be better every single day while we competed for championship after championship. I have been a part of four successful baseball teams throughout my time here, and our leader, Chris, deserves a significant portion of that credit. Because of baseball, my high school experience was immeasurably enriched with unforgettable memories made with my teammates, and for that, I am thankful. These four years have shaped me into a better man who feels greatly prepared for the next step. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me, and thank you for playing a part in my exciting sentimental high school career. My name is Phil English. My experience at Eastern has been one of the greatest in my life. It's going to be very memorable and I'm very sad to go. I, When I got to Eastern, my first thing I did was join the track team, and it was one of the best decisions of my life. I got to meet wonderful people who welcomed me as who I am. I didn't have to change myself for anyone, and it was a great experience. I got to when my first championship at Wilbur Relays with my team, and that was that was what I knew was going to stick with me forever. It was like I was joining a family. Um, Mr. Malone, the head coach before our new track coach came in, um, Coach Jackson, is one of the best people I've ever met in my life. He we've had our up and downs, but. He has always been there for me. He's never had doubt in me even when I've lost a race, when I run, when I won a race. He's always been there for me. Um, some one of my best, like one of my best um, memories from Eastern track and field was when I had won my first sectional championship. It was when I was a freshman, and I didn't really think I was ever going to never win something that big because I was a freshman and I had only been doing something I heard it was that year. It was my first time. And Malone had said to me for my race, he was like, you got this. Like he said you got this. And I was I was in lane eight. It was like one of the most nerve wracking things. As soon as it came across the line, you should like it was just beautiful how um, happy he was for me. And that's when I knew it was like I felt like I was really part. I was like, huh. Um 
I really want to thank a teacher at my school who's like really like helped me along the way with myself. It's Mr. Kemry. Mr. Kemry, I met him my freshman year. He's my English teacher. And we had our ups and downs, but he was really doing like that, who I transitioning from middle school to high school. But he really was there for me. And then this year I met Mrs. McBride, who is like a second mom to me. Mm -hmm. She has been really reaching out to us during this quarantine, making sure we're okay. And I really thank her for that. I really want to thank Eastern also because they've made this remote learning a lot better for us as a whole. The tweeting on Twitter about how much they miss us, the videos that they made for us, it was really nice. Um, I wanted to thank my, my mom and my dad because they've been with me through the whole way and they really have helped me shape my shape me this whole experience at Eastern. My mom has done a lot for me. She's gone to the school for me to just to get me recognized in in the whole community. Um, I want to thank my sister too because she has really helped me through out the way. She's pushed me in track and field and yeah, it was really nice. I will be attending CSU University, Charleston Southern University in South Carolina for four years mm -hmm. on a full ride for wow. track and field. I'm going to be an English major. Thank you, Mr. Smart, for having uh, that in the background, ready to go. Thank you very much. Okay. Rob, All right. Before, Rob, before you move ahead, uh, we missed the resolution on the Scholar of the Month. So if I may have a resolution recognizing our Scholar of the Month. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So, uh, Hi. <clears throat> okay. Terrific. Thank you. Please continue. I'm going to turn our attention now to a presentation on our updated, or this, as the state's calling it, new remote learning days plan. Um, we'll have various administrators chime in for, for different components that um, they really spearhead it. Um, so I'm going to try to bring up the PowerPoint right now. Is it invisible to everyone? Yes. 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 To, to. Okay, so uh, we created this plan uh, the week of March 9th. Um, we had uh, met as a faculty the prior week as conditions were becoming more uncertain. The governor held his first meeting conference call with superintendents uh, the week prior. Um, so by March 13th, we had our plan ready to uh, launch and we had shared it with parents that Friday morning. And as conditions occurred, we um, decided as did many other districts in Camden County to initiate our remote learning plan on March 16th. So that was the first day of our plan. And ever since it really has been a document and an experience that we've tried to improve along the way, uh, making some changes to the calendar at different times. Um, and it was about two weeks into the plan that it became clear we would be on the extended remote and we had to begin looking at how the year would end. So before the district advisory council meeting, again on that April 21st where we met with uh, our stakeholders, I had put together a document about how we had to look would look like at the end 
uh, especially what graduation would look like. And that was the first time uh, we, we talked about what graduation could be at that meeting. And then we worked our way to where we were, trying to understand how we would get to each point. And now we're at this point, and uh, we've been instructed to plan for the site. It appears that it will be remote at this point for what programs we do in the summer. The New Jersey Department of Education has impaneled a committee, including superintendents uh, throughout the state, um, that's seeking feedback feedback and putting some plans together. Uh, the state of Maryland has already put a plan together that deals with different aspects of returning in the fall. So that's very interesting. And, and, I'm, and hopefully New Jersey will have some updates in the next few weeks about what the fall may look like. But at this point, we have to plan for what the summer is going to look like. And initially, it's going to start as remote as well with our programs. So going through how we put together the plan and what became important as we went. These really became five overriding principles. Uh, really, principle four was how we started. You know, we were definitely in a, a phase of uncertainty. And we tried to look at every preparation that we could make, getting feedback uh, from our staff as we went along, as we went along putting a framework together. And then it came down to what precautions we had to take and our, our custodial maintenance under Mr. Judge and Mrs. Mrs. Chiraldi, we were fortunate to begin installing um, more hand sanitizers. We were able to purchase additional equipment for cleaning because again, the virus itself is still unknown. Uh, people were not um, becoming ill in the immediate area, but uh, it was in the West Coast and it appeared to be spreading in New York by that time. So precautions quickly became what adjustments we had to make and what alternatives. And by that, I meant we had to start talking about activities in our building, particularly on the weekends, outside groups that would use our buildings, and ultimately became our own activities. Uh, we had to cancel field trips as we uh, moved along. So we then had to move into the phase where postponements and unfortunately cancellations like SATs began to occur. And all that started to really um, tumble together until, um, you know, we had to initiate the plan. So once we were in the plan, it really became what directives were we receiving from the Department of Ed and from the governor. And uh, the governor was the 46th, 46th governor to announce the closure of a uh, schools for the year. So Governor Murphy had been very deliberate with his planning and the information that he, he went through. And at, at that point, you know, we tried to make every decision as we had to make every decision because everything was unknown. And as we were in the uh, plan itself, it became very clear that we have to uh, really focus on solving things and problems that had not occurred in the past. Um, and, and going about it with an understanding that some of our families were were, were, were suffering. Uh, we had some families that were um, diagnosed with the virus, parents. Uh, we had some students. We had parents. Uh, we had students lose grandparents and great-grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the suffering that we do see on the news is has been true. Uh, in Camden County as well as in our district. Um, so all of that had to go into the mix as, as we tried to adapt along the way. So what we started to do is really uh, think about closing the building completely, moving to more and more remote. And that's what we did as we mapped ourselves. Uh, building maintenance became focused on, as I mentioned, disinfecting. Um, as of May 15th, we did bring back increased custodial. So we are actually starting some of our summer cleaning at this point. And the LED project that was approved in the fall, that has been continuing throughout this process because uh, con school construction was permitted to occur. In terms of communication, uh, this was the first year we used all of our alert systems with our new web page. Mr. Smart uh, was very active in sending out alerts and 
uh, notices. We had created a, a COVID-19 page even before we began the remote. And on that page, I would post uh, the updates as I knew them. Dr. Toll has, uh, on a continuous basis, sent weekly notices out to parents and students. And of course, the last week or so, it's really been about graduation and how we're gonna close out the year. And then a lot of the um, platforms, uh, we've been experimenting with Google Meet as the primary platform. YouTube Live was used um, a little bit and live streaming is now uh, more common with some of our lessons. And Dr. Borda will give an update on some of the things we're, we're continuing to explore and move on with as we go. All right, so it appears my slide is not moving. I just got notice. So. Robert, do we have anybody in our building that has uh, tested positive? Uh, we had um, one employee uh, a couple weeks ago had been positive, but um, he is healthy and back to work. So we hey, do have one you. employee. Okay. Yes. Want, you can go to the left and just click on a number two to move the slides. Rather than move the slide, just click on a number two there. No? So, it's all right, so. It's frozen. I'm trying to move to slide four. Oh. So slide four at this point has meal distribution on the left. Yeah, we didn't see anything but one. We're no, stuck we on one. We're stuck we're on plan one. We're yeah, planning backwards, moving forward, and we haven't moved forward. We <laughs> haven't. Okay. No. Uh, and now you need to go backwards. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So let me um let me uh come out of that and we'll try to reload it. Maybe I won't move it to presentation mode. Maybe that will. It's eight o'clock. Yes, it's my it's my antique German clock. Okay, so that was the initial slide. Those were the different principles that I had reviewed. Um, and then I was on slide three with communications. Are you seeing uh, the third slide that has communication protocols on the left? No, we're still not moving forward from the first one. Wow. All right, so that's, let's try a different way of doing it. All right, we're gonna try one more way of doing it. I'm gonna try going to the original PowerPoint instead of the Google slide. Let's see if that. Um, becomes an option. One more try. All right, does, is it appearing? No. No. It's appearing, but it's on number one. <laughs> okay, it's number one, okay. I have a, there you I go. number two. Oh, uh, there yeah. we go. All right, so went back to the original. <laughs> PowerPoint instead of the Google slide. Okay. All right. So those were the five principles right. um, that I had gone through. And uh, on, th on the third slide, talking about the health emergency and the building maintenance and the communication protocols. So we're now up to slide four. And again, focusing on how the year is going to end is, is really critical. We're now about four weeks left. So it truly is really critical. 
Uh, to get into the uh, the substance of the plan, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Smart now to talk about um, how we've uh, addressed some of the technology challenges. Mr. Smart. Uh, good evening, everyone. Let me show myself. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, just want to let you know that uh, prior to the 13th of March, uh, we did put out a survey to uh, parents and students trying to find out who did not have internet at the time. Uh, we deduced at that time there was approximately uh, 9 to 11 students who did not have internet at home um, due to uh, Mr. Harris's fourth part. Uh, when we went to the one-to-one -one initiative uh, years ago, we have modems from uh, Sprint uh, that we can provide these students so they have access to internet. And with the crisis going on, Sprint actually increased the uh, data from two megabytes per month to 20 megabytes per month, uh, providing enough uh, internet for students to be able to use for remote learning for the entire month. Um, during the remote learning time, as we've been uh, notified by teachers, parents, and students of internet issues, uh, we've been providing them with these modems. Uh, actually, one day I pulled up to the school and there was a young boy sitting on a bench uh, looking like he was on his iPad and I saw his mom and I said, what, what is he doing over there? She said, our internet's down for the next couple of days. So he wanted to do his work. So he came over Aww. to the his Wi-Fi uh, so them with an internet modem and he was able to go home and do his work from home. Um, we've had challenges with the, um, the iPads, uh, with the repairs. There's been damages. Uh, my team's done a great job of manning the help desk through instructional hours and after instructional hours assisting students. Uh, before we left, they set up uh, iPads for students if we had issues, and I've been meeting students at the school on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, to be able to take care of any iPad issues, uh, repairs that needed to be taking place. Um, so for the most part, I think it's been going fairly well. I want to thank um, Mike Senator and the entire team for all their help behind the scene, uh, scenes to make this happen. Um, you know, it's not a one-man operation, and, and, and they do a tremendous job. Thank you, Mr. Smart. Now we're going to address some of the um, instructional issues, especially with the equitable access for our, our students with special needs. Do keep in mind that um, this presentation is based on the plan we have to submit to the state, and these were all required topics that we had to include in the plan. So, Dr. Roth, please. Microphone. Sorry. Good evening, everyone. Um, I would just like to start by um, adding to Mr. Smart's um, presentation in the sense that um, our special needs students um, had some difficulties with technology access, um, even how to use some of the platforms and Mr. Smart and his team have been wonderful. So thank you, Mr. Smart and the technology team. Um, moving on to our special needs students. Um, it would be an understatement to say I was a little concerned going into this um, because of the unique needs of the students in our department. But I, the teachers and the students and the parents um, have really exceeded my expectations. We have been able to adapt material, um, followed accommodations and modifications in every student's IEP. Um, precisely um, specific. The technology has helped us to do things like share materials, share the screen in large print, um, provide extra time. Um, again, uh, with the support of Mr. Smart and his team and the other administrators, that has really gone um, smoothly. Um, one of the things I'm most proud of is the support that the students have received. Um, we have a um, a large pool of instructional aides who have a lot of talent. And we are able to have those aides check in with students personally um, and work with them on either logistics of when things are due or actually look at content. Um, so using the platforms of Google Meet, Google Hangout, um, we're able to do that and give our students the one-to-one -one attention that they, that they require. Um, in terms of the population I was most worried about was our job coaching students. So much of what they do is in the community. 
Um, and as a result of that, we've kind of switched focus with the help of our job coaches and instructional aides and worked more towards um, things like filling out applications, um, working on mock interviews, all of which can be, can be done over Google Meet and Google Hangouts. So again, I'm proud to say that every student's IEP um, accommodations and modifications are being followed. And um, although not an ideal situation, um, our students are moving forward and we've had lots of positive feedback from parents um, and, and teachers as well. Thank you, okay. Dr. Roth. Dr. Borda? Yeah, so I will, um, good evening, everyone. I'll just add uh, some additional context here about the um, ESL modifications. So as always, our ESL teacher is uh, Mrs. Mancinelli, and she's available to help the whole faculty uh, adjust assignments or implement strategies to help our ESL students and to also help the students with uh, strategies to complete their work in uh, all of their classes. We are using a variety of applications to translate materials for our ESL population. Um, our district website already had a translate feature built in, so that is available. There are a variety of languages um, that students can choose from. We also are using Microsoft Translator uh, and posting uh, some of our COVID letters, our update letters to the website in um, translations. Our teachers, uh, with the help of, of Ms. Mancinelli, are using um, things like uh, captions for YouTube videos or for the Google live stream if they're presenting a lesson that way. So that caption option allows the student to see the text on the screen in addition to hearing uh, the instruction from the teacher. And the teachers are also able to use some extensions through Chrome to actually leave audio comments for students. So in addition to having any written feedback on work or typed feedback, uh, audio feedback can also be left for, for the students as well. Thank you, Dr. Borda. You'll be back in just a little bit. We're gonna uh, switch over to Dr. Toll, talk about attendance during the remote learning phase. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Cloutier. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, attendance has been an interesting process. Um, what's been really great is that the students have been really, really responsive uh, to the shift to remote learning. Um, <clears throat> when we've had specific issues with students that maybe did not log on, generally what happens for some of the vice principals would usually email the student to do what we consider like a wellness check. So our focus has been on number one, making sure students are engaged uh, consistently but also checking on their emotional well-being to make sure that, you know, throughout this period, um, they've been able to, you know, hang in and, and really communicate if there's anything that's going on, like, in, in their household. So um, everything has worked out pretty nicely, and uh, we're looking forward to continue to seeing students engaged on a regular basis until we finish uh, this school year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Toll. Mrs. Giraldi, uh, the meal distribution. Microphone, microphone. Okay, good evening. Um, so from the uh, second week of the closure um, on, um, we have been distributing meals uh, via the directive of the state um, to all of our students. Um, initially, we delivered those to the homes of the um, students qualifying for free and reduced lunch, but then the state directed us to make them available to all students. And we established a link on our website where students can sign up. So it is available to all students. And um, I just wanna thank our cafeteria staff. They do, have done a great job um, coordinating this. They uh, deliver lunches to 345 of our students wow. and also prepare another 100 lunches for our uh, satellite districts, uh, Gibbsboro and Laurel Springs. So we provide five lunches a week. And so they're preparing about 2,200 lunches per week. And um, with the help of our transportation staff and our buildings and grounds staff, they are delivered to the homes of students. So that website is always active and uh, families can sign up at any time by going to our website. Thank you, Mrs. Schraldi. 
And uh, the transportation delivery has been unbelievable, Mrs. Mason. And uh, tomorrow we'll be de delivering the caps and gowns and graduation attire. Um, so she's been an exceptional help to try and coordinate uh, uh, that delivery to, to more than 500 homes tomorrow. So can I get a so, clarification question on that, Robert? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Are we doing that all with our own staff, or are we contracting some of that it's, out? It's part part our staff and part Nutra staff. Cafeteria staff is half and half, and then transportation is all our own drivers plus two of our buildings and grounds. Uh, J Jeff Judds, our director of buildings and grounds, and one of his staff. Um, are also assisting. So it, it, it's mostly in half house with the exception of NutriServe. Okay, thank you. Yes, and that's for the food. That's what's been happening with the food. Tomorrow, we are using our contracted buses to help us with the right. graduation delivery. So tomorrow will be the first time. Uh, and actually, Mrs. Mason, uh, when she contacted our bus companies, a lot of the drivers uh, really wanted to participate in, in graduations to see the students they haven't seen in a few months. So um, so lots of buses going out tomorrow um, and hopefully all deliveries will be, I believe it's between uh, 9 and 12.30 is our, is, our, is our goal when the buses are going to start loading up and going out um, tomorrow. And then we have um, two more delivery dates as well that are part of the graduation preparation. All right, continuing into the next slide, I'm going to bring back uh, Dr. Borda to really talk about the heart of the remote plan, the uh, the instruction and the work that um, has been done among our teachers? Yeah, so the instructional piece of this plan has really truly been uh, a very collaborative process starting from those early planning days in March through the development of our updated grading procedures um, in April and implementing a variety of new applications for instruction over the past couple of months. Uh, our faculty have provided feedback in surveys, um, in a number of virtual meetings, and we even set up a, a Google Classroom for a pilot group of teachers to test out some, some technology platforms. So they're troubleshooting every single thing that we're trying and offering new solutions to make remote learning effective, as effective as possible for our students. They're supporting each other uh, through the process and um, they're really working together, you know, virtually side by side uh, to, to test out these new platforms and find creative solutions. And sometimes even just lending emotional support uh, if the tech challenges temporarily are a little overwhelming. Um, We've started with teachers pre-recording lectures. That was some of our first instructional strategies. And we've progressed now to uh, teachers finding ways to position their iPad and their laptop and their personal cell phone so that they can figure out how to live stream a lesson. Um, so that's been really um, amazing to, to be a part of and to see all of the work that the teachers are putting in to the instructional piece. Our social emotional committee and the school improvement panel are, are also gathering materials and working on professional development to help the staff navigate all of the new parts of this teaching and learning scenario. Um, and as we continue to evolve, we keep finding the best tools and strategies. Uh, this summer, we are investigating the use of Zoom in our math, ESY, or extended school year program. Uh, so we look forward to um, working with the staff to develop protocols and, and processes for that. Uh, and it just has really, as Mr. Clotier, Mr. Clotier and others have said, it's been really very collaborative um, and supportive really from all aspects of our, our learning community. Thank you, Dr. Borda. And uh, Mr. Smart has reached out to uh, Zoom and we have a price quote moving forward so we know what the cost of using Zoom because um, the, the free version that's been available is, is limited. Um, so if we do need to remain in remote for next year, uh, we'll be ready to go and we're gonna do uh, training with teachers. And um, we've already had initial conversations with our some of our math teachers and our teacher leaders on looking at Zoom and starting to implement it um, moving forward. Now, one of the, the key aspects of, 
of moving into the remote plan was we were about five weeks or so into the semester. Um, so there hadn't been too many grades at that point. And certainly doc, one of the things Dr. Toll shared with me after he had uh, many of his student leadership virtual sessions was uh, a good number of our students were concerned about how their grades um, could improve over the semester uh, because we, we focused on feedback and really all about um, helping every the students adjust to this different environment and certainly testing an environment like this it, you know isn't easily replicated um, so different focus on assessment and early on we focused on the feedback and the progress and they're still they're still cru uh, crucial but we had to come to a determination on how grades would actually be factored for the year this was a big topic throughout the state. I had multiple meetings with our county superintendents. Um, some of the K through eight districts were focusing on pass fail. Uh, the high school districts were struggling a little bit more. Uh, what we decided to do was to go with a dual system, try to keep grades um, as much as possible uh, in our current system with our, with our students who are attempting to achieve the highest grades. But we also wanted to build in a safety net for those students who were uh, struggling, especially in the remote environment. We did not want this situation to have a permanent impact on their grades moving forward. So we came up with a dual system that will have grades for the A's and the B's, and then we'll have passing and um, unsa uh, uh, satisfactory and unsatisfactory uh, for students who the, the grading system um, would not be to their benefit. So we're going with that dual system and uh, we made some adjustments along the way from, from some of the parent feedback. So we are gonna retain numerical grades within the system. If it ever becomes an issue of a, a, a student needs to know what their numerical grade was, let's say for a scholarship that is recorded, but uh, we'll, uh, if, if the student, it's to their benefit to use uh, satisfactory at this point, that'll be used as well. So we tried to create a dual system that would be beneficial to the students moving forward one way or the other. So uh, lots of work went into that. Uh, moving on, certainly one of the very disappointing parts of this year is our students haven't been here. As I mentioned uh, previously, you know, this closure was announced the day before the musical was to have a 14 hour rehearsal a few days before they were to do um, their live um, shows. And so very, and sports as well, that Friday the 13th was the last day of practice and their sports ended up being canceled for the year. So many postponements, some of which we can move to the fall. You know, we, we have moved forward with recognizing our National Honor Society students in different um, programs, the overall National Honor Society and some of the uh, World Language Honor Societies. Um, and we'll have those ceremonies in the fall, but the students were recognized this year. Some of our celebrations will be virtual. So we will have a senior academic award, virtual celebration that's part of our graduation plan as well. So that will be produced. But unfortunately, uh, there had to be many cancellations for, the, for lots of our activities. And then uh, moving on to graduation, as I mentioned before, we're still open to the possibilities of what can be done. Governor Murphy just on Monday had a question from a uh, reporter if there was, if we should hold out any hope for July. And Governor Murphy's response was, yes, you should hold out hope for July. So that uh, is a, a consideration for July or August is, is an option that our students can choose. And if that's uh, the way to go, we are prepared to do that as well. Um, and then finally, looking forward to opening day next fall, uh, whether it will be remote, whether it will be hybrid, none of that has been decided that the state is just really getting to the heart of what it could look like. Um, so we're on hold. And then just finally, the last slide, uh, you know, the technology department, Mr. Smart, especially assisted in creating a COVID-19 webpage where we put all of our updates on the webpage 
and they're near finished completing a web page that'll be dedicated um, just to graduation as well. So that'll be going live shortly also. Okay. All right, so that long presentation <laughs> has concluded. So if there's any questions. All right, Mr. Chico. Now we do need to um, have a resolution for the learning plan because I have to submit a resolution to the county office along with the, the plan itself. <clears throat> okay. That would be item three on the agenda. Yes. Oh, so moved. Make a motion. Yes, so moved. Second. Uh, move the second. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mrs. Chow. Yes. Mrs. David. Yes. Mr. Dykert. Yes. Mrs. Gar. Yes. Mrs. Parker. Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Chico? Yes. At this time, I will open the meeting for the members of the public. Um, there should be a telephone number listed on the bottom of the uh, YouTube screen. If anyone wishes to call in, Phil, is it showing up on the screen? Yes. Okay. Yes, it just posted. So there's about a 10 to 15 second lag time. Thank you. Is Mr. Smart monitoring the phone? Yeah, what would happen is that the number that's posted is actually a phone number into this meeting itself. So we do have oh, okay. um, we do have a call that just came in. Hello, am I supposed to speak now? Yes, you are you are yes. you're alive. Please. Okay. Hi, this is Shari Kaufman. I live in Voorhees. Um, I have a couple questions about the learning plan that you just went through. Um, my first one is now that we have been home for so long, have you considered having the guidance counselors reach out to all of the students? It's not just the students who are not attending class that might need a little TLC. You know, our students are working very hard. Some of them are in the middle of AP tests. I think it would be wonderful for them to hear from their guidance counselors. Um, our seniors are graduating. It would be great for them to hear from their, their guidance counselors where they would have gone into the guidance office and said, hey, guess what? This is where I decided to go. Or they would have had the May 1st decision day pictures. Um, and there has been no communication from the guidance department at all to students who are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Thank you, Mrs. Kaufman. I will consult with Dr. Toll and uh, uh, follow up with Mr. Susco uh, about what um, the schedule with our with our guidance counselors and reaching out. Our guidance counselors have been involved in the IEP meetings uh, that have been scheduled, um, but uh, we also did receive um, some really strong positive feedback during our district advisory meeting. So I'll, I'll see where we are. A lot of the uh, attendance uh, is is being handled through our vice principals, especially. Uh, but thank you, and we will we will provide that feedback to, to Mr. Susco and our guidance department. Uh, my next question revolves around Google Meets. 
I was wondering why none of the staff are doing live Google Meets with the students. Some of the teachers are recording themselves and sending it out. But again, our children have not seen their teachers live since March 13th. And I was wondering why live classes are not being held. I can tell you that at many, many schools across New Jersey and the nation and the, and the world um, are doing this. So I was wondering why we at Eastern are not. We, we have moved to live streaming with our teachers. Um, you know, Dr. Borda did, did address that. Uh, we had training um, with our teachers with live streaming through Google Meet and communication through alternative Google documents and such. But no, we have not authorized uh, live, interactive live sessions with our teachers and students other than in the special education where we have multiple adults in the classroom. Um, at this time, the, the safety and security issues that uh, have been prevalent, well, not prevalent, that have occurred. We've had some minor ones within our school, even with its use in special education, uh, but the um, concerns with Zoom, and other matters, live interaction, um, sorry, live interaction with um, all, of our, all of our students. Until we have a platform that will work with all of our students, uh, I have not authorized live interaction. But as Dr. Borda had mentioned, Zoom has responded to all the security concerns and they have built, they have added uh, teacher facilitator controls of the system where the teacher will be able to control the camera and the teacher will be able to control the microphone, uh, unlike other platforms where students can turn them on and off, um, as well as the issue of uh, Google Meet sessions continuing even after teachers leave the classroom. So until we have those safety and security protocols that uh, are available for all of our teachers to use, and it does appear that Zoom has responded to those concerns and we'll be using that this summer. Okay, thank you. And my final question is about the transcripts and having a C not show on a transcript the grade of a C and said it would be an S. Um, in most schools, not around our area, an 80 is considered a B. So when the colleges see a tr uh, 80 on a transcript, that is a B to every college in our nation. But by putting an S, you are delineating that the student in our school didn't meet the need the requirement to get an A or a B, but an 80 is a B. So I, I would like to suggest that you consider that because that's actually going to hurt children's transcripts, not help them. Well, the choice to use the choice to use an S or a C will be the student's choice. Um, so we will not impose the S on a student. So that the numerical grade uh, will appear. So it's the numerical grade that appears. And, um, you know, there's the, the conversation of the grading system is not new. Um, yes, there are many districts that use the 90 to 180 to 90, but there are districts that are like us. And um, actually, I believe it was about five or six years ago, we did a study of districts uh, in South Jersey, and there was about 50% of the districts that had a system similar to ours. But you are correct. We will not impose an S on a student if it is not to their benefit. So the, the purpose of the dual grading system is only if it benefits the student, um, will it be there? So uh, the idea was if a student was, um, you know, a high B student, but struggled with remote and um, we did not want to punish that student uh, for struggling in remote. So again, it's a safety net and it will be worked so the student will have the choice for what they want to appear on the, the transcript, whether it's the numerical grade or the S. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Kaufman. Thank you. Do we have any other calls in? I have a question. Uh, yes, all right, the next one came in the queue. Yes, yes, sir. Hi, good evening. My name is Jeff Alexander. 
Um, I um, am a parent in Gibbsboro. I have a question um, about summer activities. I realize this is a fast moving area and um, things change day by day. My son is very interested specifically about activities involving marching band. Um, does the district have any guidance at this time about um, what, uh, what the expectations may be for activities over the course of the summer? At our June board meeting, we will approve all of the uh, summer positions. So at this time, we do have our marching position intending to be on our summer position. Um, you know, there really hasn't been any direction from the state other than plan for remote. But I do think, um, you know, some of the um, phased reopening that Governor Murphy has allowed outdoor activities. So I would be hopeful. And again, it's hopeful. I, I don't have any information, but if, if it could be created as an outdoor activity completely, we are hopeful. So it is still um, on our schedule of what we are, are intending to approve in the summer uh, at the June board meeting for the summer, unless we are told those activities are not permitted. Again, at this point, the um, any gathering of 10 pe persons or more on a school campus can, is considered um, a violation of the existing order. So hopefully, again, as rephasing, maybe uh, when the governor went into the phased close closing, he started with 250, he then went down to 250, then it became the stay at home order uh, with the 10 people as a public gathering. So I am hopeful for outdoor activities that maybe it'll get be pushed up back to 50 students that could be meeting together at any one time, especially if it's all outside. That's, that's my best guess at this point, sir. I understand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. I believe we might have another in the queue here. Hello? Hello, do I speak now? Yes, you are You are live yes. now. Hi, my name is Melissa uh, Nayat, N-A-Y-O-T-E. And first of all, I wanted to start off with the fact that we appreciate the steps that you have taken to address graduation. As my graduating senior in the class of 2020 community, we're just satisfied with the plans announced last week. However, we do have some other questions regarding the plans you have in place. Please. Um, since we have not been advised, since we weren't advised until the notification came out last week, are you guys going to be putting together some participation from the students and their parents going forward? Well, like it's community I, or a task force? We will be very happy to have parental participation. And I have heard from a couple parents since we announced the plan. Our dilemma is at this time, we can't have any meeting beyond 10 people. Yes. Um, and we're only allowed to have essential personnel at this time. But I am hopeful by June 8th, and again, like I said, for the marching band, if, if things could be done outside, a lot of the, the setup that we're doing um, for the plan will occur in the stadium and outside. And I am hopeful, really, really hopeful. And I've um, sent a request to the New Jersey Department of Education if they would consider changing it from 10 to at least 25. And if that can happen, because to be quite frank with you, our staff and our students really do a lot of the legwork in preparing for the graduation. Um, so we, we've had to bring in different essential personnel to help with a lot of the things that would have been done by the students um, and certainly project graduation with their help as well. So uh, I am open to ideas to involving parents, certainly um, for the parade or the diploma day and all of those activities, absolutely. And then if we are allowed to have an, um, a, a celebration either in July or August and it's on the field, um, you know, it usually takes us two months to coordinate all of our vendors 
and uh, with the police and everything else to do an outdoor graduation. So we're going to be on a short timeline if the governor does give the go-ahead for the July. And um, we will gladly welcome parents and student assistants in the process. And if you have ideas for that, um, we're going to be putting out a sign-out sheet for our staff in terms of how they can help us with some of the things that we need to do between now and especially June 8th. And I, I will gladly put one out for parents. And if you have suggestions of what, what you think can be done, and certainly Project Graduation is, is working as well um, with Dr. Toll and, and coordinating. And so the more parental help we could have, please, thank you. Um, I do have another question. Well, I do have some more, but all Gloucester County school districts are have sought assistance of the legislator to allow responsible social distance graduations to occur. Are you willing as a school board or a superintendent willing to ask the governor, New Jersey, New Jersey Senate and assembly to allow such graduations? Well, I do, not I do not support the petition that was already rejected last week. However, I have reached out to our local representatives our county superintendent um, with a desire to increase the, what is allowed for a public gathering. Um, but the, the petition that was um, shared last week and rejected, um, at that time the Gloucester Township superintendents did it just as Gloucester Township and after it was rejected, they did seek others. Um, but I have to say, I. I is my belief that I will work with the county superintendent and our local officials to make our requests. And, I've, and I have made some requests. And so far I've made three requests and two of them have been granted. Not that I was probably the only one. Um, way back when, when we were had to adjust to bring in reduced lunch, I asked um, if the Department of Ed could consider if um, there was a means for families to, to pick uh, food up directly from supermarkets and there was a bill that was uh, moved by the legislature that could make that possible for some families. And we also asked for working papers to become uh, electronic where people did not have to come to the building and sign um, for working papers. And the governor last week announced that you can now do working papers through video. We've actually allowed parents to email and uh, scan us working papers. So we've already had a system where they didn't have to come in the building, but those two requests I did make, and I have made a third one concerning the public gathering. So I am, I'm hoping for June 8th, we'll hear better news. Um, for the alternate in-person graduation dates in July and August, are there going to be rain dates chosen, picked? Yes, we, we can, well, usually our graduation is, is on the dates we don't pick. Uh, rain dates, it's in the gym, but I would say that's not possible. So that is a good point. Um, and those were put out as tentative dates where we thought we could we, we could get it done and, and it was in the time frame and it was within some other programs that we have running. Uh, but that is a good point and um, we'll consider that. We For the photography dates, we are going to build in some slack into the schedules to allow for rain dates because I know some schools are doing photography in the gym or in the auditorium, but we wanted to do all our photo opportunities on the stadium. We're gonna prepare multiple sites on the stadium field for parents and students to take pictures. And so we'll build in rain dates there and we will do our best with the, um, the graduation ceremony itself. As, as you know, if we're allowed to have a ceremony for a hundred students and we do five of those, um, you know, we might have to spread that over two days and if it's a rain date. So, um, like I mentioned, we will consider any possibility, but thank you for bringing that up as a, as a contingency we need to consider. You're welcome. And I just want to go back. Now you were saying that the, it takes about two months for all the vendors to be in place for a graduation. So if the governor were to change his executive orders come June 1st and allow big gatherings, are you guys prepared for the original graduation date? It's going to take a lot of work. I mean, we, we might not be able to use the same sound system that we traditionally use. Um, I could tell you we've run into issues with our photographer. When we, when we 
attempted to schedule with the company that we've always used. They furloughed all of their employees. Um, so Mr. Pico had to do extra legwork and we were able to finally uh, work it out where we, we've secured two photographers on those days. So there's real challenges to, um, you know, and it's just not, not within schools, it's the entire economy. I was watching uh, the governor of Colorado speak today in Colorado's um, ahead of New Jersey and reopening, uh, but you know, they're, they're allowing their factories to operate, but there's no supply chains. So mm -hmm. it, it's not going to be easy. And one of the key things that we do is security. You know, the, the command center that our police department builds for graduation and how we regulate parking. So it's going to be a lot of work that has to be done very quickly. Uh, but I know we have lots of people who are committed to volunteering and helping. And um, I can tell you the Voorhees police have been incredibly helpful since the moment we moved to remote um, Chief Forty and and the township officials have been supporting us the entire way. So, yes, it will be a challenge, but um, we're going to do all that we can. Now, the email that we received at 7 o'clock tonight from Dr. Toll stated that the caps and gowns will be delivered between 9.30 and 12.30 tomorrow. What about the honor cords for the students? Yes, we've received most honor cords. I think there was only one at this point. Uh, where we did not receive the honors cords. So the honor cords have been also uh, put together with the graduation caps and gowns. And we're also including the diploma covers at this time. Mm -hmm. So uh, so students can begin to take pictures in their full garb. There's only, I believe, Dr. Mr. Pico told me there was about 25 um, cords for one or two. It might've been like the Latin, I don't want to misstate. But one of the honor society cords have not come in but the rest have, and they've been separated and put with the students' uh, materials that are going out tomorrow. Now, if you guys go ha have to do the alternate route for the diploma delivery, who would be delivering the diplomas? Because, I mean, at this point, a bus driver is going to come over and deliver my, my kids' cap and gowns. Yeah, the, the first two deliveries will be with our bus drivers. The diploma delivery will be with our staff and with our community members. I already have one dignitary, I don't want to say which town, who's already volunteered to also participate in delivery diploma. Uh, the number of teachers who, that was the, the number one way teachers wanted to participate. So a lot of the coaches of our students, especially spring sports, they want to help in delivering the diploma. And I could tell you one of the concerns I had when that as an option that, um, you know, everyone would have wanted Dr. Toll and there was, would have been no way for Dr. Toll to deliver 12, 512 diplomas in an entire day. Um, so <laughs> that was one of the concerns I had with that as a method. But now that we have so many teachers and we have some community members, dignitaries who wanna be involved, I am much more hopeful that um, it will be a member of the staff. So it'll be an administrator, a teacher, a coach, or a community member that we're all gonna to pull together and deliver the diplomas. Well, no offense to Dr. Toll, but I think my son would rather see somebody else at the front door. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know he's had a tremendous influence from the teachers there. So he well, hasn't had any interaction with Dr. Toll. So I should be grateful for that. Well, we do have teachers um, <laughs> who are participating and coaches who are participating. It's not everyone, but um, it was a good number, especially of the teachers who work with seniors will be working and um, you know we're going to make that list up and um, to try to fill it in and, and spread it out as much as we possibly can between the three towns make sure that um, you know one teacher doesn't go to just one of our, our sending districts try to make mix it up as much as we can um, so all the towns are represented by everyone who's participating I do appreciate your time this evening and those are all the questions I have thank you Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else in queue? I do think, let's see. Um, no, it's only names and Mr. Dykert's phone number remains remaining in the queue. Okay. At this time, I will close the meeting to the members of the public.
and move into purchases and investments. Uh, motion to approve items one through eight. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? And roll call. Mrs. Chow? Yes. Mrs. David? Yes. Mr. Dykert? Yes. Mrs. Barr? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Chica? Yes. Under matters of personnel, a motion to approve items one through four. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? No. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. David. Mrs. David. Jane's on mute. Her mic's off. Yes. Mrs. Gar. Yes. Mrs. Parker. Yes. Mr. Dykert. Yes. Mr. Paul. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mrs. Chow. Yes. Mr. Duchico. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, education, Gail. May I have a motion to approve items one through six, please? So moved. moved. Second. Moved and second. Do we have any discussion on items one through six? Roll call, please. Mr. Dykert? Yes. Mrs. Gar? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Chow? Yes. Mrs. David? Yes. Mr. Duchico? Yes. We have no items under policy. Uh, athletics, Mr. Paul. May I have a motion for items one and two? So moved. So, second. 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 Any discussion? It's a bummer to see uh, number two. Sorry to see that. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully it's for a good reason. Mm -hmm. Family yes. reason. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Gar? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Chow? Yes. Mrs. David? Yes. Mr. Dykert? Yes. Mr. DiCicco? Yes. Uh, we have no items for student activities, uh, finance, or Bob. Could I please have a motion for items 1 through 18? So moved. So moved. Second. second. Uh, move and second. Any, any discussions on items 1 through 18? No. Um, there was a correction on number 18. Um, the $2,500 was changed to 1800 I just right. want to make sure everybody knew that. Yes. yes. That shows on the uh, new agenda. Oh, it does? Okay. Mm. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Chow? Yes. Mrs. David? Yes. Mr. Dykert? Yes. Mrs. Gar? Yes. Mr. Uchiko? Yes. Okay, we have uh, no property items. We have uh, some informational items. Uh, Executive Planning Committee, uh, Jude? Yeah, I, I just, um, uh, as we approved before with the new business administration, um, right now, I guess the contract, unless something's changed in the last few hours, is still at the county for approval, right? That's correct. It's, yeah. yep, we're still waiting. And uh, that's about it for executive planning. 
Okay, uh, negotiations will discuss briefly in the executive session. Uh, technology, Hillary? Uh, uh, there's none this month okay, for this meeting. Yeah. Bob, anything on Camden County Schools? Nothing to report. Uh, Municipal Alliance? Uh, yes, um, our project graduation committee met on Monday. And... To clear my throat, um, I think Project Graduation has put together a nice um, group of gifts for the children. And normally, less than 500 students attend Project Graduation, about three, three, anywhere between 360 and 380 in the previous years. But this year, we will be giving gifts to the entire class, which is about 500. Mm -hmm. So they are purchasing some TD, some generous TD bank cards. I don't want to give everything away. I don't want the children to know, but the students to know. And also, um, I'll plug Jersey Mike's. They're going to give coupons to every student. Um, they will be buying T-shirts for the entire class, and they're going to purchase the 8x10 photo for the students. Um, we have some business donations that are coming in, and if we can get enough business donations to divide them up equally among the students, we'll distribute that too. Um, the chairperson ordered 40 blank signs, so if you know of anybody who would like to buy a blank sign and put it on their lawn, they'll be available um, June 5th and you can pick them up at the chair's home. So <clears throat> if you're interested, let me know. And again, they're $20 a piece. Okay. Yeah, I will. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Uh, Hillary, I'm sorry I skipped you for New Jersey School Board. Uh, no, nothing at this point. Okay. Uh, Ed Services, Veronica? Nothing to report. Anything on the, on the library, Gail? Uh, nothing to report for the library, but I did attend a board of directors virtual meeting on May 8th, and I'd like to report something that might be of interest to everyone. Sure. Um, they're starting an online university, NJSBA. Um, it will be organized by uh, Marsha Levin, I think everybody might know her from the county meetings. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be in three phases, this university. Uh, the first phase, pretty much we all know about already. It's the mandated training for governance one, two, and three. Um, it'll be self-paced courses that you can go in and out of when you like. Uh, the second phase will be courses that have a time limit. And the third phase, they will incorporate vendors and spender, uh, so sponsors. So um, that's going to be pretty interesting because you'll be able to get a lot of credits online now. And also, workshop this year, you may have read, is going to be a virtual conference. And um, they're trying to do it on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, October 20th, 21st, and 22nd. They're planning on 100 training programs, approximately 37 a day. Um, each session will be 30 to 40 minutes and uh, run on every hour. So it gives time to ask for uh, questions if anybody had questions. Um, also, these um, there's going to be a keynote speaker every day. And they're going to have even a social event at night where they'll have student perform, uh, you know, how they, the students come out and do performances and maybe an art night. This, uh, all this is still in the works, um, an art night to showcase a, a lot of the students' art, artwork. And it will be a um, live for 365 days. So if you can attend on those oh. days, You'll be able to uh, go to any session, any time. If you want to do all 100 training programs, you can, because uh, it's going to be taped. So 
if we want to watch something at a board meeting, uh, we'll be able to do a lot of different things with this. So it should be interesting. And uh, I think it's going to be great. So um, they're hoping to make a little bit of money, but nothing like they did last year. So uh, okay. other than that, that's it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Kutir, did you have any discussion on any of the times two, three, four, five? Any of the drills or guidance reports, student activities? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. My microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, like you are correct. It is <laughs> okay. Uh, did I don't believe we had any items for old business or anything? Anyone have anything for new business? Just just a heads up that the June meeting is going to be packed, so we'll start at seven p.m. We're trying to bring together uh, a lot of the celebrations that would have happened at the. Um, April, well, the March, really, uh, meeting with our field hockey team. Uh, Dr. Roth is putting together a celebration for the student of the month, I mean, student of the year for special education, as well as the luncheon. So we're, we're trying to do a few of the celebrations that would have happened if we had live board meetings all together in June before the end of the year comes. So do expect wow. a, a longer meeting in June. Okay. Okay. Um, at this time, I will again open the meeting to the members of the public. Uh, the board will be going into executive session. So uh, this would be your final opportunity if you have any questions. And wait a minute or so until we... it's nine o'clock. It is posted. Thank you. Anything come up, Ram? Mr. Smart's advising us to move on. Ready? Okay. Ready to go. It's nine o'clock. It's nine o'clock. Uh, <laughs> the, the bell tolls. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. That's for negotiations and personnel issues. Uh, moved and second. Uh, roll call, please. Anna, you're muted. Thank you. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Chow? Yes. Mrs. David? Yes. Mr. Dykert? Yes. Mrs. Carr? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. Chico? Yes. Did you send out new uh, invitations, right? No, I will create the executive ses session one by one. Um, I want to say nine ten. Stretch our stretch our legs. Take a break. You know. Thank you. Set it for nine ten p.m. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. I, thank, I you. Thank, thank you. The public, I thank the public for joining us this evening. Good night, everyone. Do we do we need to call back in? Goodbye. I will call you, Mr. Dykert. All right, Robert. Okay. okay. Bye.